There are smiles that make you happy. There are smiles that make you blue. There are smiles that steal away the sadness. Like the sunbeam steals away the dew. There are smiles that have a tender meaning. That the eyes of love alone can see. But the smiles that fill my heart with gladness are the smiles that you gave to me. And there are smiles, smiles, smiles that make you blue. There are smiles that steal away the sadness, like the sunbeam steals away the dew. There are smiles that have a tender meaning that the eyes of love alone can see. But the smiles that fill my heart with gladness are the smiles that you gave to me. Wow. I love the word celebration. That's why we're here to celebrate Bill Henry, a life well lived. I just have a few things to say. My first assignment was to quiet everybody down. <laughs> so, I've accomplished that already. One of my core beliefs is that God gives all of us, each of us, a gift and expects us to use that gift for the sake of humanity. I knew Bill Henry's gift. One of his gifts, he was a healer. A healer is a person who has a presence that calms you down. A healer is a person that you just want to hang out with because you feel better after having been with that person a while. A healer hears your name and still remembers it 10 minutes later. <laughs> Knows you by name. In fact, that's how I understand what it means to be connected. To know somebody by name. He knew me by name. I knew him by name. We were connected. He was a healer in my life. Now that I'm a grandfather, I feel so blessed to uh, realize my grandchildren have gifts. And Bill was a grandpa. Papa? Was he Papa? Yeah. Papa. Papa. Four grandchildren? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I've come to know these grandchildren. And I just want them to know how blessed they are to have had a healing grandfather. He walked among us softly. And that's how I will remember Bill Henry. He was a healer in our midst. What makes a gathering special is the telling of stories. I've been hearing a lot of Bill Henry stories this afternoon. 
and we're going to hear some more very soon. So I'm going to turn the mic over now to his daughter Ruth, and she will be the MC, which means she gets to say, that's enough. <laughs> Thank you so much for everyone for being here with us today. Um, we love the uh, clip that you just watched because the memories bring back Dad. And having you all here with us today makes us feel a little bit closer to him. Um, I'm here today standing here representing our family. Um, but I'd like to take a moment to just make sure, I think you, everyone here knows all of us already, but I would, um, First and foremost, I'd like to start with my mom, Elaine, affectionately known as Babu or Queen E to Glastonbury Police Department. My sister, Kathy, who greeted everyone. Uh, Kathy and her Ben and his wife, Courtney. Um, my sister, Nancy, the baby of our family. Um, and last but definitely not least, my daughter Ella, Princess E. <laughs> the apple did not fall far from the tree for those of us. Um, also joining us today are my cousin David, who is my Aunt Joan's son, um, all the way from Lexington, Kentucky. And, um, and uh, I would be remiss if I didn't also take a moment to introduce uh, my pseudo big brother, who uh, was a West Point cadet and stayed with our family in 1980 and has been part of our family ever since, um, Fred Hoover from Tennessee. <laughs> Two years ago, we had a funeral mass for Dad. But it was just the ten of us. There was no hugging, no holding hands, no singing, but lots of emotions. It was really odd, like most of the last two years um, has been for all of us. Um, the day was beautiful. Oh, Reverend Allen spoke um, along with Father Mark. Uh, and we had a beautiful, um, burial with full military honors. Um, uh, Dad's buried at the Veterans Memorial Cemetery, um, which happens to be right next to Eastbury School. And Dad's <coughs> gravesite is immediately adjacent to the playground. And uh, we trust and believe in our hearts that there's no better place for him than to listen to the children's laughter on the playground every day. Um, so, again, thank you very much for being here today to celebrate, because we really, if you couldn't tell, we wanted to be happy and a celebration and lots of stories, um, direct orders from my mom, smile, um, so we're going to do our best, um, like nobody did better than my dad. Um, the world would be a kinder, gentler place um, to live and grow if we were all as kind, patient, understanding and generous as my dad. Um, Reverend Allen, thank you for grounding us um, and your thoughts. Uh, um, he, you were a trusted colleague um, of dad's and a partner in keeping Glastonbury's youth um, both physically and spiritually well. So thank you very much. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce my Uncle Pete uh, after I uh, uncle B is not really my uncle. I always seem to have a need to do that. Like, Uncle P is not really my uncle. Um, but Uncle Pete has been my dad's best friend since grade school. Uh, and um, he has a lifetime of stories to share, but I've told him he has five minutes. <laughs> uh, uncle Pete. Thank you, Ruthie, and uh, greetings. Yeah, my name is Pete Connell, and looking around uh, the floor, I can say I may not be the oldest, <laughs> but I've known Bill the longest. 
Bill and I went to kindergarten together back in Crestwood, New York, part of Northeast Yonkers, a phenomenal um, town. Uh, we had 51 graduate from eighth grade before we went to high school. And we've had about 19 reunions over the years, just to tell you how close a little class from Crestwood, New York was. So, and also, um, I was asked to, to speak for three minutes or five. So I sat down and wrote a speech and I gave it to my wife and it happened to be seven and a half. So I went back and I cut things down, but I didn't cut them down, I added things. So <laughs> if you would please bear with me, okay? Um, in grade school, I, I, I actually it was in junior high school, um, the Christmas pageant, which uh, it was called a Christmas pageant then. It really should have been called a holiday um, pageant because part of it was the nativity scene or story and the other part was the story of Hanukkah. Uh, Bill and I happened to be two of the third three kings, okay? I was the old guy and he was the good-looking guy. <laughs> um, we went to Roosevelt High School, and one time uh, we were going to uh, a fancy uh, dance over in New Rochelle. Uh, we couldn't drive until in New York at night until you were 17 or whatever. We weren't 17. So we got a, a, uh, a ride with a friend who could drive, and Bill and I sat in the back seat uh, of the car with our dates, and we decided to hold hands with the girls. And very romantic. <laughs> so we're driving along, and after a while, for some reason, the two of us raised our hands. Lo and behold, we've been holding hands together. <laughs> um, Bill was always uh, voted uh, best looking in, in all of the schools, from grade school. I have our grade school um, uh, book over there, yearbook. Um, but he had a name with the guys of Smiley Ipana. Ipana was a toothpaste back in those days, you remember? <laughs> I don't think it's a, a brand name. But Smiley Ipana, because of that beautiful stuff, uh, excuse me, I'm not crying yet, I'm just waiting. <laughs> um, because uh, of that wonderful smile. In our junior and senior years, we had um, jobs at a very ritzy, well, it wasn't ritzy, it was a very fancy restaurant next to the school, the high school. It was Patricia Murphy's Candlelight Restaurant, um, where they had flamingos outside in the pond, and inside uh, they had gloxinias. If you ladies who garden know what gloxinias are, it's a plant, beautiful plant. Uh, Mrs. Murphy was uh, very fond of those. And they served popovers in addition to food that was pretty decent. Bill and I started as busboys, but then we got promoted to hosts, where we would meet people at the entrance, because there was always a line, and we would take their names and try to convince them to go into the bar, and they would be called eventually. Uh, bar being a very profitable part of the restaurant. 
So anyway, when it came, when it came time to uh, uh, our senior year, um, uh, here, Bill always knew he wanted to be a doctor. He always knew it. I can, I can, and what college he wanted to go to, which was Columbia. So in our senior year, um, he asked me, Pete, after graduation, what are you going to do? And my parents were both immigrants and didn't go to college, so I didn't have a lot of guidance. But I thought quickly and said, Bill, I, I know all of my friends are going to go to college, so maybe I'll go to college too. <laughs> and he said, well, on Saturday, you have to take this test called the SATs. And uh, he said, it's Saturday. you got to sign up. you got to bring two number two pencils. Okay? And it starts at 9 o'clock, so be there. And I did. And fortunately, I got into Middlebury College. And I have to thank Bill. Okay, if he hadn't really kind of asked the question, I'm not sure what would have happened. As graduation approached, um, my brother Scotty, who was working at NBC TV on the Today Show, if you remember the Today Show, not the morning or the night, but the Today Show with Arlene Francis. And he had a, a guy working for him that had uh, graduated from Columbia University and had worked summers on Cape Cod at the Wayside Inn. His name was Rune Arledge. Uh, I don't know if that's a familiar name to anybody. Rune went on to ABC and started Wide World of Sports and ended up as president of ABC. It doesn't have anything to do with Bill or me, but Rune had to interview uh, a couple of kids, Bill and myself, um, and recommend them, if we passed inspection, uh, to um, the lady who owned the Wayside Inn in Chatham. Um, so we went down to NBC, Bill and I, and we did um, have the interview, and we did pass and we got the job. But one of the interesting things that Bill and I used to laugh about was my brother got us into a control, the control room of a uh, soap opera. I can't remember which one it was, but Bill was enthralled uh, with this whole experience because the director uh, in the control booth was yelling things like, camera one, take camera two, no, three. And he went on and on as he was directing which cameras would go into the, what you saw on the screen. So Bill and I, oh, he always remembered that. Uh, and uh, so let's proceed to uh, the cake. Mrs. Marjorie Haven, originally from Bro Brockton, um, bought this old inn in Chatham. And she hired boys to wait on table. Uh, there were six or seven of us. Uh, we called her Ma Haven. It was not Mrs. Haven, it was Ma Haven, Ma. Uh, she was very particular and very protective. So what we found ourselves, uh, after we finished up at night, and uh, found a beach party that we wanted to go to. We'd go to beach parties, so we'd come in very late. But then we'd have to park our cars. Bill didn't have one, I did. 
okay, in the town parking lot across from the park um, and sneak across to our uh, dormitory, which was above the, the, uh, uh, the kitchen. So, uh, you know, I could go on and on for an hour about Chatham and, and to give me the book. <laughs> So anyway, um, yeah, uh, the Cape was a phenomenal experience, and I think because Bill went to medical school, he spent more year summers there than most of us. Um, but it was really great. Um, well, Bill met Elaine when Bill was in medical school. Okay. Um, and uh, Bill contracted TB, which most people know. Yeah. Um, but he recuperated, and then they got married. Um, we were invited, and I was in Germany uh, serving in a NATO Army Group headquarters. So my mom and dad went, and um, they sent all of the pictures and newspaper clippings that we were able to read over there. Um, when I came back, um, I remember that uh, Bill uh, was doing his internship at Hartford Hospital. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I got a job with Procter & Gamble in sales and had the Hartford area, so we were able to see uh, Bill and Elaine every so often. And um, uh, then Bill finished and went to Boston, Mass General Hospital, for his, his uh, residency. And guess who got promoted to Boston? So we followed them up to Boston and saw them in Boston. Um, and then Bill came back to Hartford. And guess who uh, got promoted back to Hartford? <laughs> so um, Bill and Elaine uh, settled in Glastonbury, we settled in Simsbury, but we got to see each other often. And the girls, we had two girls, okay? So you get the picture, wherever the Henrys went, we managed to follow them. <laughs> we used to visit uh, often when they were at Button Ball and then Tall Timbers. So now for the finale, uh, and that is, what kind of a guy was Bill? You know, he served. He served in the military. Um, I think he probably went in as a captain and came out as a major. I went in as a lieutenant, came out as a lieutenant. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyway. Um, but anyway, when Bill was served in Vietnam, he was exposed to. Uh, Agent Orange. And years later, when he knew his time was very near to passing, he called me on the telephone. He wanted to have a chat and say goodbye. That was Bill, an amazing guy. So peace and shalom, my friend. Thank you. An amazing friendship, and I think maybe you guys just liked holding hands a lot because <laughs> you kept finding your way back to one another um, throughout the years. Uh, 
Next, I'd like to invite my nephew, Luke Benson. Uh, he's going to say a few words on behalf of the grandkids. Hi, my name is Luke Benson. Dr. William Henry is my grandfather. We call him Papa. Some of you, may, some of you like Pete, have known him your whole lives. I've only got the chance to be with him for 15 years. I wish I got the chance to be with him longer. I always remember him as a caring and giving person. He always made sure to call me on my birthday every single year. Even in his older years, he still had a beautiful singing voice. Um, I remember going to Disney with him multiple times. He was generous to take us, pay for everything, our hotel room and everything. And um, I remember riding Big Thunder Mountain Railroad with him, which is one of my favorite roller coasters. And you got to go skip, skip go right to the front of the line, which I, of course, loved as a little kid. <laughs> Every year we would go up to his house, Papa and Bob rented in um, Wakefield, Rhode Island. And um, it was always one of my highlights of my summer every year. Whether it was boogie boarding on the beach, catching crabs in the lake, or throwing parachutes out the deck of the house, <laughs> it was always a good time. In my teenage years, he would take us to a steak dinner at the Black and Blue on the night on the night before Thanksgiving. Then during Thanksgiving, we would watch football. I'd watch football with him at my house. And when we gathered for dinner, he would always say the prayer that we still say today when we gather as a family. It was amazing to see all the people he was impacted as a doctor. He will always be remembered as a person who put other people first, and he did that every day in his job. I've heard a lot of great stories about him. I would love to continue hearing more stories throughout the, about him throughout the day. Thank you. Luki, you dropped your uh, room key. He loved going to Disney and introducing his grandchildren to Disney, his kids and his grandkids. Um, so wonderful. I think I asked Ella what her favorite memory of Papa was, and uh, she recounted um, Bob and Papa's 50th anniversary cruise. We took a Disney cruise and um, had a lot of fun. Um, so it's a shared memory that we have with Papa. Um, our next speaker is where the city kid from Yonkers meets the farmer from Glastonbury. Mm. The day that they were inducted into the Glastonbury Rotary Club over 50 years ago, Billy Dufford. You can see the damage a family of the Henrys did to the population growth in this country. <laughs> I met Dr. Bill Henry 1-26-1970. Both of us were coming into Rotary at the time. I had never met the man before. And the minute we were inducted into Rotary, Russ Proust stood up and said we were doing product shows then. And they, we both had jobs uh, right away. And I said, what is happening? I looked at him and I think he looked at me and said, we already have to go to work. <laughs> uh, met uh, Elaine at a ladies night, I'm not quite sure when. And uh, she's had a couple of names in Rotary as Queenie. And she even had it put on her marker plate. And uh, she's been known to have a relatively heavy foot as she drives. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know how many tickets she got. Uh, met her three children. And probably the first time was at either at a Christmas party, uh, at Santa Claus. Everybody believes in Santa Claus because he was always at our our Christmas party. And uh, then we had family night in the summer. Um, I've known his three children. I never, I know Ben. I didn't meet the other grandchildren till today. Uh, what a family. It's great. 
Um, Bill was president of Rotary, 85 to 86. He got the top award of Paul Harris that anybody can get in Rotary in 2001. He had 16 years of perfect attendance. I believe he started the trips to Saratoga for the horse races. And uh, I don't know whether we have the Kentucky Derby on today in his honor or not. Uh, he also went, and I think he's the only president that went to uh, two uh, international meetings. I know I never went. And he went to one in Germany, and he went to one in Toronto, I believe. Um, he used to lead us in song. He loved to sing, and he was good at it. Uh, we, our Rotary Club at times would have some heated discussions. I, can you imagine that? <laughs> um, he always came in with a calming voice, cool, calm, and collected. And his thoughts were uh, very much to the point, and uh, he would get us through these things without killing each other. Uh, he was what you would think a Rotarian should be, service above self. He did the four-way test continuously. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And he lived that to the best. Uh, he had a little ditty, and I'm probably not going to get this thing quite right, but anybody that ever heard it, had I, the first time I heard it, I'm going to say it was Archibald, A. Archibald, <laughs> and he couldn't say that thing. He could say it faster than I could have possibly read it and make it right. And I know, having known Bill, I am a better person for having known this man. Thank you for letting me. Thank you, Mr. Dufford. Uh, the two of you shared those values of Rotary, um, and that uh, definitely made your friendship that much stronger. Um, I think a couple people have talked about the fact that um, Dad was a student, and I did not know Uncle Pete about him encouraging me to take the SAT, but I'm awfully glad that he did. Uh, Dad was, uh, he loved to learn, whether it was about their next trip that they were going on, and he would research all the possible options and way to get there, um, or if it was about uh, preparing for um, something at work. Uh, so one of my proudest moments of, for my dad was right before he retired, um, he took the boards because he wanted to be at the top of his game if he was going to take care of his patients. Um, and having just passed a certification course myself, um, it was, it's hard. <laughs> and I didn't give him enough credit, that, I'm sorry, um, at the time, but uh, he was, he was such a great student, um, and well, I did not go to an Ivy League school. I'm planting the seed already. Ella has already decided that she, um, fingers crossed, going to go to Dartmouth. Um, so it skips a generation, uh, which is just fine by me. Um, but uh, next, I think um, he was a. Uh, there's a saying that talks about uh, a good pediatrician is hard to find. Difficult to leave, and I think of you, Brian Cleary, um, still going to dad in your um, later years. Um, and uh, impossible to forget. Um, and I, uh, he attributed his success um, in much part to his amazing office staff um, and the people that he has the pleasure of working with every day. Um, so I think, Liz, am I going to call you up next? Uh, hi, my name is Liz, 
and I had the privilege of working for Dr. Henry for 28 years. He was incredible. He loved every child that came in the office and their families. And he was a smart and caring doctor who knew all of his patients and their families so well. So, uh, so many things I could say about him. One stood up uh, is Kara, our wonderful nurse practitioner who could not be here today. She, when she started working for us, she went to the hospital with Dr. Henry and she came back and told us she felt like she was at the hospital with a rock star. <laughs> everyone knew him and admired him and listened to everything he said because he was just amazing. It was just incredible. I'm sure you all remember all of his buttons all over his jackets that he had on there because he knew the kids and the families would love him. And all the families would bring him more buttons and then Elaine would have to wash the jackets <laughs> and put all the buttons back on and they were ready there for him. And it was just, just an amazing family to work for. Elaine and Dr. Henry never forgot our birthdays, holidays, Nurses Day, all special events. They were just incredible to work for. When Nancy and Ruthie worked in the office, it was just wonderful. And thank you to all the Henrys for everything, because you're just amazing. takes a village. Uh, um, when dad, um, about five years ago, I guess, um, dad had to have a heart valve replacement done. Um, and he, I, I begged him to come to Vermont because I was working in the hospital in Vermont at that time um, and worked with a cardiac surgeon there. And there was no way he was leaving Hartford Hospital, um, no matter what I said, um, as far as being close to home and being close to me. Um, but it was the best um, choice ever because still at that hospital is um, not only was the cardiac ICU nurse one of his former patients that took care of him, uh, but uh, he he just he loved that place and he was still a rock star in 2017. And we kept telling him he had to pace himself as he got his heart valve replaced. Um, next, I think I'm going to call our uh, yes. Uh, our uh, friend, um, dad's doctor at one point, um, uh, and business partner, um, and family member, Dr. Price. before they went into the military. And uh, so after the second year, we were both drafted into the service. Uh, we both had orders to go to the South Pacific. Bill went to Vietnam. I was supposed to go to Korea, but my orders were changed, and I was lucky enough to end up in Alabama. Um, but then after the service, we both came back to Hartford Hospital to complete our training. And then we both opened up an office in Glastonbury together, um, which we were there for 30, 35 or six years together. Um, it was there that Bill really came into his own. He was, um, 
a remarkable, remarkable doctor. Uh, whether it was a child with croup or it was a distraught parent, he always knew the right answer and always knew what to do. Um, he, he really was a wonderful man. Uh, in the years that followed, after, while we were in practice, we took care of each other's families. And I have a cute little story to tell you on. I had a, when my son Damien was about five or six years old, he was jumping on the bed in, in the bedroom with Danny Vasek. <laughs> and uh, he came down from one of his jumps and landed on the side of the, the windowsill and cut his ear, which was not really very bad, but started screaming. And Kay and I ran into the bedroom and he said, um, I'm bleeding, I'm bleeding, I need a doctor. <laughs> and Kay said, well, your father's a doctor, he's right here. And Damien says, I need a real doctor. <laughs> and that's all I can tell you is that Bill was a real doctor. <laughs> My sisters and I can recite the um, uh, cure for croup, um, having <laughs> been through many a nights where we know one TV and we were all watching television and when Dad was on call, the TV went off and it was silent, which was not an easy task with three girls in our house, um, but we had to be quiet while Dad talked to um, all those mothers and fathers over the years um, and, you know, Turn on the shower, put your child in the bathroom, close the door, and they get, they'll be okay. So um, it was, uh, he, he was a healer, he was, he was definitely a good doctor. Um, I think uh, Maya Angelou said it best um, when she said, people will forget what you said, and people will forget what you did but people will never forget how you made them feel. And my dad was gifted in helping, in making people feel good. He listened, he was patient. I think he was envious, Dr. Price, that you had all boys, because he had all girls. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot, there was, uh, he had a lot on his plate. He was so excited when Ben came along, and, uh, um, and then he had, you know, three grandsons, and then his princess arrived. Um, and he was very happy to have girls. Uh, we've all really enjoyed reminiscing about Dad's wonderful life, um, going through boxes of photos, uh, including his bucket trip to New Zealand and Australia, uh, his many adventures to his favorite places on Earth. Um, we've talked about a few of them, Disney and the beaches of Cape Cod and Rhode Island. Um, but he loved this town. This was home, this is where he liked to be. Um, and uh, I moved away in 1986 and I still call it home. Um, and I thank him and mom for that. Dad was funny. He loved to laugh and usually at his own jokes, crying before the punchline. Um, he loved to, pay, to play the penny slots at the Mohegan Sun. Um, so Luke, you talk about going to the black and blue on Thanksgiving, like before Thanksgiving. We used to go to the casino with my grandmother. <laughs> uh, um, and he loved his poker group. Same group of guys. Uh, the third Thursday of every month for over 45 years. Um, he loved the birds. He tormented waitresses with asking for a beer. I was like, Dad, there are 30,000 of them. Can you tell her what kind of beer you'd like? Um, I did ask him how I was going to remember him um, and think about him after he passed and what animal he'd like me to associate with him. And in true Papa fashion, he said, I like birds. I said, could it be a little bit more specific? <laughs> um, Last but not least, you've all been very patient, and I hope you'll continue to share stories. Um, but the last story, we have a few minutes of a slideshow, um, but I would be remiss 
that none of this would be possible if it wasn't for the love story he shared with my mom. They were truly uh, one of a kind. They complemented each other incredibly well. And on behalf of all of us, Mom, we're really proud of you for not only caring for Dad when he needed us most, but for being the strength and pillar of our family since we lost him. So, without further ado, um, oh, a little bit further ado, Ben has got uh, uh, play, 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 yes. Oh, it's going to warm up a little bit yeah. here. We would like to encourage all of you um, uh, to take a smiley face stress ball. So if you find yourself needing a little pick-me-up, um, uh, by all means, introduce yourself to someone that you didn't know before arriving today. Um, and uh, you all share a love um, or a relationship or connection with that. Um, and he is looking down on us today, right before we got here. The Baltimore Orioles came back, which was really exciting at 202 Tall Timbers. Um, and he was ready to leave when he left. It was, he was at peace, and he had a good life. And as Uncle Pete said, he got to say goodbye. We were blessed to have him at home, um, which many families were not able to do the same during COVID. Uh, and that is a, um, something that we'll treasure for the rest of our lives. So thank you very much for being here with us today. Uh, and I think we're having Oh, well, we're not going to do it. There you go. I do like to do it, but it might just take a little bit. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, please. The bar is open. There's more food to be had. Um, enjoy.